Labor League. Here we have the second match that's going to be displayed for round one of the NBL Season 5. Here we have a match between Flair or Jack Cullen and Susano Andre on the other side. Um, the reason I chose the match because they aren't using necessarily cookie cutter chains and also I want to show off um, some of the megas that were used in this match. It, it was just a really fun match to watch. So anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Anyway, as we start off, um, Andre is going to go ahead and go for the Shell Smash on the Cloister against the Grand Bull. Now, obviously, I don't think that he was um, really thinking about what might have happened uh, if the Grand Bull was on the field since Grand Bull isn't commonly used. But Grand Bull is going to carry the T Wave and it's going to get the T Wave off on this Cloister, making it immobilized as he goes for the play rough here. Having these things help. With that, another play rough is fired off, and Cloyster is going to be no more. So just like that, Cloyster has been dealt with by a grand bull. <laughs> a commonly used Pokemon, but something not so common. Anyway, with that being said, Gothitelle is going to come out on Andre's side of the field and go immediately for the taunt. Uh, as we know, Gothitelle has Shadow Tag, so it allows, um, basically it traps Pokemon on the field until it has been dealt with. So, grand bull is stuck here as it goes for the play rough. And she's going to have to get these spammy attacks off until um, Got to Tell or Grand Bull goes down. <clears throat> anyway, this Grand Bull is lasting a lot longer than uh, I would have expected, at least, as he goes for another play rough <laughs> and lowers his tank's attack. So the bulk is real with his left over set. And we got the tell is finally going to take this Grand Bull down with a Psychic. And with that, June the Talon Flame is going to come out. Jack on the side of the field and goes immediately for the Brave Bird. Our already Brave Bird straight to the face. It's going to destroy this got the tell. Susano is going to go for the Porygon 2. Uh, obviously going to be very, very bulky. And Porygon 2 is going to have Gale Wings, <laughs> which is really funny. As it traces this ability. Jack is going to switch into Sweet Bones. The B-Sharp. B-Sharp, however you want to pronounce it. And it's going to um, absorb this Toxic. Since he is a still type, it's unaffected. That being said, Andre or Susano is going to go switch into his Charizard. As our um, Bisharp is going to go for the knockoff. Obviously, this Charizard is not holding anything up for Mega Stone. It's going to Mega Evolve into Charizard X this turn. Anyway, Charizard X is going to go for the Roost here. Really good play on his part because he is going to avoid the Sucker Punch KO that could have possibly occurred just then. That Jacqueline is going to switch out Sweet Buns. Fearing the Charizard X and going to the Talon Flame. That's it. That'd be a really good standoff for the team. Like Charizard X is going to go immediately for the Dragon Dance this turn. Uh, boosting up speed and attack. It's going to take this Brave Bird. It's forced to eat this Brave Bird before he can even attack. Which is quite unfortunate for Charizard. Because if he can't KO the Talon Flame, he is not going to be able to roost up to recover. Anyway, with the boosted uh, attack. Charizard is going to go for the Dragon Claw and it's going to KO Talonflame. Now Jacqueline's going to go into Pollution on the Weasel. And if I remember correctly, I love how this Weasel is used in this match. <laughs> so Pollution is going to go ahead and go for the Sludge Bomb here. Doing a decent chunk of damage to Charizard as he goes for the Dragon Claw. Another sludge bomb from Pollution. And the black sludge is going to recover Weasel a bit here. And the Roost. And 
That was a sludge bomb. Which actually is going to poison Charizard X and destroys his longevity. So this Charizard only has a matter of time before it is completely gone. So Andre Kulong, the inevitable, is going to go ahead and go for another roost here. And I believe Jacqueline is just going to continue to spam the sludge bomb until this thing goes down. And it's going to keep dealing with the, with the uh, black sludge. Charizard's run out of options against Wheezy, because Wheezy is a physical tank. I mean, Susan is going to go ahead and switch to Skullbeat here. She's got to um, absorb some of that sludge bomb. How uh, <laughs> Obviously not a special defensive tank. It's going to take a pretty decent amount of damage from that sludge bomb. Skullopee is going to go for the sword dance here as Pollution goes for the Will of Wiz to cripple this thing. So it just cut its attack right back in half and made the sword dance completely useless. As well as um, putting stasis on the Skullopee. So, <laughs> killing two birds with one stone. Another sword dance? And another sludge bomb. See, slow and steady is obviously um, doing very well for this reason. Critical hit fires off from Weezing and it's going to pretty much put the skull of the hell instead of death door, so to speak. So Andre is not doing so well against Stasis at all. It's going to go straight in for the poison jab. Obviously, not going to do much at all against Weezing, who's a bulky tank. Not taking crap from Skull of Beats, poison attacks. It just isn't going to happen today, Skullopede. Boy, this reason this longevity has been intensely insane. Andre's going to go ahead and go to the Rotom now. He's going to go for the Willow Wisp. Because Weezing is going to cripple the Rotom itself with Willow Wisp. Now, probably the best course of action here for the Rotom would have been to go straight in for the attack, but unfortunately, he went for the critical effect. But, he does carry the Hex attack, so I did not realize that, um, or I forgot that I should say. So, he does carry Hex, which actually works out quite perfectly for this Rotom here. This is the same amount of damage to the Weezy, almost kills the thing. That being said, another Hex is going to fire off from the Rotom, and it's going to finally take this Weezing down. That was a long time for that Weezing to be on the field. Anyway, with that, Jacqueline is going to go ahead and go into the Laxorus, the Mega Ampharos, which I've not seen one of these in quite a while, so I was really stoked to see this Pokemon on the field being utilized in the way that it was. Okay. Rotom's going to fire off the Will of Wisp to try to cripple this thing. Um, Laxor's going to go for the Agility, which I was really, really excited about because I used to run an Agility set uh, Ampharos when this Pokemon was first released. Agility set Ampharos are insane to take down. They're super fast and they do a ton of damage. So anyway, with that, Dragon Pulse is going to fire off. And that Rotom is going to go down. That crit did not even matter. Wait, Andre's going to go into the Porygon, too. And it's 
going to copy Mode Breaker. Black Cirrus is going to go into the Focus Blast and just dominate me over here. Look at that. Look at that power. Like, surprise, Porygon survived that. But he is a bulky tank. Anyway, because he's burned, he cannot be frozen. And the Ice Beam is going to hit pretty hard. But that agility is going to make this Ampharos insane as it takes out the Porygon, too. Not for agility, Ampharos would not be as powerful as it is. And last but not least, Charizard X is going to take the field again as the Dragon Pulse fires off. And Charizard X is down. That being said, Jacqueline does defeat Susano or Andre in round one of the NBL. So nice match, guys. Definitely, definitely. Anyway, being said, be sure to like, subscribe, share this video around, uh, leave some comments below, and hope to, get, hope to see you guys in round two.